banking stocks have been announcing their earnings and the markets really liked what they've heard. Banking stocks have gone up quite nicely beginning last week and they continue to go up this week. Just today, US Bank announced and in the pre-market, the stock is up. Banking stocks are well liked by investors for a lot of reasons. The economy for 2025 is setting up to be a good economy. Consumers have jobs and they're probably going to want to spend more money, borrow more amounts and seek more financial services from these big banks. As I look at the banks, I wanted to pick out the one that I think is the best stock for my portfolio and share that analysis with you and share my conclusion on which stock I'm going to go with for 2025. Looking at the performance of these stocks for the past year, I'm going to be looking at JP Morgan, US Bank, Citigroup, Bank of America, and Wells Fargo. They've all done well for the last year. The one having the best performance from an appreciation standpoint is Bank of America. And second place is Citigroup. When we zoom out to the five-year, you can see that there is disparity once we get to a five-year. And I think this provides good insight. JP Morgan did the best. That's probably the one that's sustained its value the best. And Bank of America did well over the last five years. Sort of. 38% is an okay return. But U.S. Bank Corp and Citigroup have really lagged. And that's not a bad thing. That means that they're probably discounted far better because they're well-established, well-capitalized, very good book values. So those might be an area of opportunity for me. I'm going to look at these banks and value them principally on their book value to share price. Looking at the uh, stock price to book value ratio is one fundamental evaluation I'm going to do. And second, look at the valuation, the intrinsic value of the banks based on their earnings per share. I'll stack rank the banks and then make a decision on which bank is the best one for my portfolio. I wanted to invite you to become a paid member of this community and you get really nice perks with the membership. Principally, you'll be invited to a stock investing workshop where we do hands-on evaluation of financials and looking at company stocks and trying to find a value, a fair value of those stocks. It's a really good exercise to become a better investor, as well as on Sundays we have an investor call open only to members. And both of those calls, I think, are really high value add. Additionally, I look for members on live streams and really take on their questions and look at the stocks that they're looking to analyze. So the perks, I think, are valuable. And I would really appreciate your support if you can look at the details of the video and become a member. I'd appreciate that. Thanks. JP Morgan is the biggest cap bank in the industry. They have a market cap of $626 billion. It's a really good company, really good bank. I owned JP Morgan for a long time and sold it a few years back. I was very satisfied with the return on investment with this stock. They have a reasonable PE of 17.96 in the current year, and their 2025 figure is going to drop down to 12.38. They pay a dividend, and overall, they're fairly priced according to analysts. The second biggest bank is Bank of America. They have a market cap of 327 billion. It's a big bank at 94 billion in revenue. Their PE is sensible at 15.3 and their forward PE for 2025 is 11.96. They do pay a dividend and analysts believe it's also fairly priced with a slight discount if you look at earnings per share valuations. Wells Fargo is also a big bank and the third largest bank in the industry at $210 billion in market cap. The revenue is 78 billion. Their PE is 13 and 12 for a forward PE. So you can see as you get to smaller banks, you get a better PE. Dividend is 2.54% and they're fairly priced, actually priced at a slight premium of 1.36 if you listen to analysts and they base it on earnings per share. Citigroup is a large bank, but the smallest of the big banks. It's $119 billion in market cap. It's a $69 billion revenue company. The PE this year is 18, which is a little high compared to the others, but next year it's going to be really good at 9.5, which is lower than all the banks we've seen so far. Their dividend is higher than all the dividends we've just seen, and they provide the highest discount available based on earnings per share and based on analyst opinions on Citigroup. And the final and smallest bank I'm going to look at is US Bancorp. It's 73 billion in market cap, has revenue of 25 billion. PE ratios really comfortable at 14.9 for the current year. 
And next year it's going to drop to 11.8. It offers the highest dividend rate of all the banks I've shown. They're discounted slightly. Um, second best discount that I've seen, second to Citigroup. Overall, this is a quality bank and they have been growing quite nicely through acquisition. When I evaluate banks, I look at two principal valuation methods. First, I look at the book value. Banks over time should be increasing their book value. I compare the book value to the share price to try to get to the lowest metric that I can, which means I'm getting the lowest price per book value for that stock. And second is earnings per share intrinsic value. Let's take a look at how these banks stacked up. The top bank that I've got is Citigroup. And the reasons that I put them number one is principally their book value is just the least expensive. I'm paying 0.61 for their book value per share compared to their stock price. That's a very attractive book value for this bank. They've been operating well. They should do well in 2025. Their forecast is that their PE is really going to drop. They're also discounted by 13% and they provide a healthy discount at 3.58. In second place is US Bank. I put them there, even though their book value ratio is higher than Bank of America and Wells Fargo, they have a nicer discount when I look at the earnings per share and they pay a higher dividend. Probably tied for third would be Bank of America and Wells Fargo. I think it's a toss up. They're both, they both have about the same price to book and they um, have about the same discount and they pay about the same dividend. And probably in last place, and it's due because their stock price has done so well for a while, is JP Morgan. They have the most expensive price to book ratio and they have the lowest dividend rate. I own JP Morgan, so I think it's a very high quality company. It's just expensive. And I'm here to make money on an investment over time. And I think I'm gonna make the most money by owning City. I think it has the highest upside for me. It pays a very good income in the form of that dividend. And I think it's gonna have a terrific 2025. So I'm gonna buy additional shares of Citigroup. So that's my video on the best bank that I think is out there for my portfolio. I hope you found it interesting. And keep in mind, I'm just an individual investor. I'm not providing any recommendations that you buy any of the stocks I covered. I'm just sharing my journey as an investor. I hope you found it interesting. Thanks for watching.